Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. We are going to wait a little bit for the rest of the classmates. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Thank you. Hello, welcome to the class. Perfect, so this is the class of today. And here below you will find the question. There is no homework for tonight. So we will just do the, the homework there. I mean, the question that is below. And of course, we're gonna check the attendance. So Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Dani Josué Garcia Martinez. Present. Good. 
Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Presente, Chan. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Hi teacher, I'm here. Sorry that my mic was uh, was was with problems. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibeth Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. Present teacher, good evening, sorry. Uh, hello. Hello. Claudia. Good evening. I'm gonna check your attendance right now. Thank you. Nobody else is, uh, Liliana Giselle, okay, let me just check. Thank you. You're welcome. Nobody else is missing, right? Okay, okay. So we're gonna start the class of today and I have a question for you. So why? Why are you learning English? I want to hear your comments and opinions. Well, in my case, uh, I'm learning. I'm uh, like, how can I say? Um, my 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 issue, <laughs> my problem from the very beginning is that I had the idea and some knowledge of grammar. <laughs> 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 Sorry. No worries. But it, they were not organized, so I felt like there was a disorder on my head. So that is the reason why I'm learning, and also because I work uh, in an account using Spanish and English. Very good, perfect. Thank you for your yeah. comment. Anybody mm -hmm. else? In my case, um, I'm learning English um, because, well, um, all you know about uh, the doors or the opportunities that uh, knowing this language uh, can do open, it can open to you. And, and, but I think um, I, 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 took that uh, very, very personal, very um, something like a challenge with myself. Um, and I say, <laughs> I can't believe it. I cannot speak in uh, and, and, and speaking everything and understand uh, all, the, all the, the English uh, that you have to know. And then I say, no, it's not possible for me. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> yeah. very yeah. well perfect and you're speaking very nice right now so that's good okay anybody else wants to provide comment or opinion Okay, nobody else is, I guess. Okay, I'm asking you this question because today we're going to check some things about how to speak English or how to improve English. So uh, this article, I found it kind of interesting. It says how to speak English well, 25 simple tips for extraordinary fluency. 
So since we are in advanced level already, we need to not only check about the order on the words or the uh, many things that might be happening, but also to be fluent. So to speak like in a normal way, in a regular pace, like if you were speaking in Spanish, right? Very fluent. So this is what we're going to check today. Of course, other things. And we're going to do a little game. Let's wait for the rest of the people to come. So number one, it says learn what it means to be fluent in English. So that one is going to be for Giselle. So number one, it says learn what it means to be fluent in English. Uh, Giselle, can you please help us? Yes. Okay. You know that you want to become fluent in English, but what does that mean? There are two parts to fluency, knowing the language and knowing how to produce the language. Being fluent means that you can use the English, English language comfortably. You can communicate freely and you can have conversations with nat native Native. Native, native speakers without having to constantly look for help. Fluency can also be seen in how you speak. You can now plan, you can know plenty of English vocabulary. But if you have to pause or repeat a lot when speaking, your fluency might not be so obvious to someone. If you speak very slowly or in a very flat on an emotional manner, then you won't sound very fluent either. On the other hand, sounding fluent doesn't mean you actually are speaking good English. To be fluent in English, you need to master both the language and how you speak it. There's often an expectation that you must know a certain number of words for fluency. But it's important to remember that you can just study words and grammar. It can be scary, but you'll also need to practice actually speaking. The tips below will help you master how your speaking skills so that you can speak proper English and sound good doing it. Don't forget how important both features or fluency are. Good, perfect. What did you get from this? That basically to uh, sound fluent, uh, we need two things, not just uh, speak the English. We have to know what, what we are saying and not just uh, know grammar or, or words or some vocabulary. We have to know uh, what we want to express to the other person when, when we have a, a, a conversation. So not just knowing the grammar or, or the basic things. So uh, it's uh, both. Know uh, the grammar, yeah, basic things, but uh, also know what uh, we want to say or express in the, in the correct way the ideas that we want to share with the other people. Very good, perfect, Giselle. Actually, that is it. This is like a little introduction. And uh, yeah, the most important part is that there are two parts to fluency. Knowing the language, that is exactly that one. Knowing the vocabulary, knowing the grammar, knowing many things, and then how to produce, how to use all that vocabulary, all the grammar together, so you can express and speak with a native person. So that is, I mean, I, I guess here, here in El Salvador, we can understand each other, right? So we, we because of the accent, because of the words that we use, uh, if you're speaking with somebody that is from El Salvador and has uh, learned English here, we understand each other, right? So that is not a problem. What happens when you travel and you don't have anybody there that speaks Spanish? So if you use one word 
or if you use the intonation in a different way, if you sound too flat, or if you, I don't know, don't open your mouth properly. Prepositions, for example, is one of the biggest problems for people that speak in Spanish and they want to speak in English because we use in for everything, right? But not in English. In English, we have a lot of usages and many other prepositions other than in. So whenever you say in instead of on or at, other people, sometimes they, they don't understand you. I mean, it's not the same to say I'm at the hospital that I'm in the hospital. The meaning is totally, totally different. When you are at the hospital, you are there visiting somebody, taking some papers, whatever. When you are in the hospital, it's because you had a problem, right? Because you, you're sick. I don't know, something might happen. But it may mean that you go and say, hey, your mom is in the hospital. Oh my goodness, what happened? I don't know. I mean, if you express yourself in an incorrect way, maybe here in Spanish, you're going to understand. I mean, you say, oh, okay, yes, I know, but not in English. If uh, somebody is from another country and they speak only English, they won't get the idea or they will get something different. So two steps, knowing the vocabulary is one thing. How to produce the vocabulary, how to actually speak and uh, use that language with a native person. I mean, as I was telling you here, maybe we understand each other, but if you speak with a person that does not speak Spanish, are you able to? I guess you are. I mean, I know that your English level right now is very good. You are very fluent. You, maybe there are some errors with plurals and the one that I was telling you that are the prepositions that are the most common. But if we continue practicing, we're going to be able to identify that and correct Maybe one of the biggest problems in advanced level is that you speak fluent and you know that you are able to express your ideas, but you are not able to listen those little mistakes, little things, little things that, I mean, may cause an impact to other person that does not speak Spanish. So that's why we're going to check some things today that are not part of the program, that are different, uh, for you to do that one. And a tip that I can tell you since right now is to listen to yourself. If possible, you can record yourself. You can uh, record an idea. I mean, like five minutes is good enough. Expressing some ideas, something that happened in your day, for example. And then when you listen to yourself, try to listen those little things that are not correct. That you When you feel something that is not right, go and check check and identify what are your mistakes. Of course, there are some pieces of grammar that are kind of difficult, right? Like reported speech that are kind of difficult because it's totally different in English. But if you continue practicing, it's going to be a very good thing. So let's uh, check into that one. And actually I have a question for you. Have you ever spoken with somebody that is a native English speaker? If so, what, how was the experience? Anybody can speak right now. Yes, I, I have <laughs> I have experience. And how was it? With, um, well, many, many, many times, <laughs> actually. And with uh, English and an English person and then with the United States. Well, uh, with the British, with the English, England and with the English, it was very, what can I say? I don't know. It, it was very easy for me to understand, to understand him. And, and it was very, I don't know, the words are very, very easy. I don't know to understand. And with the, um, and with the other, um, it was my uh, kind of more difficult. I don't know. And because they talk, uh, faster, I don't know, very, very fast. 
and <laughs> some words I cannot understand, <laughs> but it was good for me. I I I was like, oh well, I'm not so bad. <laughs> they understood me. <laughs> yeah. Very good. So that is the most important thing that you were able to communicate. And yes, I believe that is true. I mean, uh, English from England is easier. Maybe one of the problems might be that there are some words that are different. So for example, apartment, they, they say flat, right? I live in a flat. So you need to know that kind of language. But um, other than that, they speak very clear. American people, on the other hand, they speak sometimes very hard and with their mouth closed. So that makes it very difficult sometimes. And the, the, like the, R, uh -huh. the R pronunciation is very different. They, they don't say water, they say water. Exactly. Actually, we're going to watch a video about that exactly, about pronunciation from different parts of the world. Today that we're going to speak only about English. So that is, that is true. It's, um, it's, dif it's different. I mean, if you are going to go to Canada, if you are going to go to to India, I mean, Hindus, people are ah, that English is difficult. That is, I mean, they speak very fast and the accent and the pronunciation is kind of weird. I mean, we feel it weird, right? But they feel it very nice. I, I have received uh, courses with Indian person and they are, his, his English is very, very difficult to understand. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a big challenge. I mean, Hindu people and uh, uh, Chinese people sometimes, not all the Chinese, but some Chinese people maybe are the most difficult for us here in Latin America, right? Because I mean, for, for people in the US or in Canada, it might be different. So any other person has the experience before to speak with a native person and how was it? Well, I do it on on a daily basis, but maybe I got nervous once I had a one on one with um, with the client, and he likes to talk to every one of us. <laughs> And it's just a one-on-one -on -one between uh, uh, two people. And they are asking personal uh, things, interests. They want to know us. It's like um, like a friendly one-on-one. -on -one. But mm, uh, I was nervous. But it was, uh, at the end, it was, it was OK. OK, very good. Yeah, I believe that in that kind of situation is kind of different because it's like a work thing that you are going to discuss mm -hmm. right and you know that maybe it's a friendly thing but you don't know what they are going to ask or exactly. <laughs> if you're going to say something different than your bath or anything like that right so <laughs> that, right. things like that make it nervous uh mm -hmm. you uh, you say that you take calls so has Anybody there over the phone has said sometimes, I want to speak with somebody in the US, not with you. Oh, yes, a lot of, no. Well, what happened is that I do calls. It's just, it was a funny situation. I had a Latin man <laughs> told me that he wanted yeah. to speak. <laughs> His name was like something like Cruz or, it's a, it was a Mexican name. <laughs> and he wanted to. No, but the better, ex, uh, in, I faced that issue on another account, but the best explanation that I, one of the managers told me to give to the customer to say, is that as a call center, we work the same as an American embassy. So all the place, all the tools, everything is inside US, it's just a physical place. And they are, some of them, they were like, ah, oh, okay, okay, we can continue. It's like a crazy, crazy thing. Yeah, that is true. You you can learn how to handle situations. So mm -hmm. that happens. Very good. And that's true sometimes. Latin American, we are the ones who <laughs> mm. are like more demanding. <laughs> that's right. Perfect. Thank you, Ana Claudia. Mm -hmm. Any other experience? Any other comment? Okay, 
So let's get into that one. Number two says set specific goals. That is going to be for, let's see, Danny, could you please help me with this? Yeah, sure. Um, set, set specific goals. Fluency is very high level to reach and will take a long time to achieve. So becoming fluent can be pretty unclear, unclear goal. Having such a big non-specific target won't be helpful in, a plan, in planning out your studies. That's why you should think of more concrete, concrete and obvious goals that can lead you to fluency. By themselves, they might seem like small steps, but altogether, they'll provide a steady path in your English learning journey. Good goals should be specific and achieve, achievable. When setting a goal, you should decide exactly what you want to learn and how long you want to spend learning, learning it. Here, here are some examples of good goals. Learn 30 new English words in 30 days. Have a conversation with a native English speaker this week. Learn to con conjugate, conjugate, conjugate. Uh, conjugate five irregular verbs before your next tu tutoring lesson. Perfect your pronunciation of 10 words over the weekend, then ask a native speaker to tell you how you did. Make sure that goals you set are reasonable and challenging enough to keep you motivated. You want to achieve your goals without overstressing. Perfect, what did you get from this one? Um, this paragraph um, and told us that um, we have to, to to set goals. We we have to know the reasons why we 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 want to speak fluent, and and it uh, it gives you it gives you and uh, um, some tips like and uh, learn three new English words and then and and, and then um, and that uh, is to set up uh, some goals to 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 go step by step. Very well. So yeah, I believe that that is one of the most important things that you have to do to set your goals and check your expectations about yourself. I mean, for example, one thing that you can do is to learn how to speak a little bit faster, right? So you can practice, you can check some videos, what you're going to do, listen to yourself. Another thing that you can do is to, to use grammar that is like complex, right? And integrate that in, in a daily basis situations. So things like that is going to help you. So uh, everybody's different. Everybody has different level and everybody has different way of learning as we learned already so uh, we can set different goals you you can set your own goals and then start working on that one so you can improve this good number three accept that english is a word a language <laughs> okay that is going to be for anna claudia could you please help us with number three yes of course it's like weird. <laughs> okay. Sometimes you can find uh, patterns in English grammar, but other times English doesn't make sense at all. That's right. For example, why are we, why are uh, read pronounce uh, read and read pronounce read the same word, but say different depending on whether you're speaking in the past or present tense? Or why is uh, mice the plural of mouse, but houses is the plural of house? Unfortunately, there are many exceptions to English rules. 
it's easy to get stuck on learning how to speak English properly if you try to find a reason for everything. Sometimes English is just weird. So the best thing to do is just memorize these strange exceptions and move on. Perfect. What did you get from this one? Mm, totally agree because <laughs> sometimes there are uh, words. For example, uh, uh, sometimes at the beginning is very difficult to get used to express that you're having dinner instead of, as we say in Spanish, we think it could be taking. Yeah. <laughs> but it's stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's true. Um, we need to memorize the weird things or the weird structures and then move on. Not, not try to find out why, because that make us to get confused. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Ana Claudia. Actually, that is true. I mean, there are many things. So for example, one of the most common mistakes that we do when we are learning English here from Spanish to English is, I am agree, right? People says, I am agree, and that is not correct. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. agree. Or I disagree. <laughs> or about the age, right? You say, uh, I have 15 I have. years old. And I mean, <laughs> yeah. Do you remember when you were like, <laughs> so, and, and that is true. I mean, at the beginning, whenever we are learning English for the first time or on the beginner's level, we want to know why for everything, right? Why is like that? How is that in Spanish? How is that in English? But then we know that it's not possible. We just mm -hmm. need to to practice, to learn the rules whenever it's possible. And then the other ones go step by step, little by little, right? Mm -hmm. So that is the good thing that now we know, but then mm -hmm. in the past it was, it was difficult sometimes. Mm -hmm. Good, perfect. <laughs> Question for everybody, what is to be stuck or to get stuck? Like I'm stay in the home. same place or? Yes. When you don't move, that movie, no? uh, yeah, when you what want, to, uh, yeah, it could be a situation, it could be many things, and you want to move on, but it's not possible because of many reasons, right? Very good. Number four, it says, figure out your weak spots. This is an important one. Juan Miguel, could you please help us read? Uh, okay, I have a question. No, 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 it, it's it, it was about to read the, the lecture. Okay, go ahead, please. Number four, figure out your weak spots. You might find you might find some parts of the English language are specifically difficult for you. These weak spot, these weak spots can be anything: grammar, usage, pronunciation, sentence formation, and so on. It's important that you find out what they are. So, what they are. So you can focus on improving them. English does have a lot of have have a lot of tricky features, and some can be even trickier depending on your native language. Pay attention to what you're having problems with. Okay, sorry. Pay attention to what you're having problems with, and dedicate more studying to it. You want to make sure you improve in all parts of the English language without lying behind in behind in any of them. Good. What did you get from this? Um, it's I I, I am agree with this because uh, in my case my weeks I, I think my weak spots spots are. Uh, Try to under, trying to understand people when they are talking, not not us, because um, I think uh, all of us are in the same place, in the same level. Uh, but foreign people is um, kind of difficult. So this this part or this part that is the listening is difficult for me. But uh, it. Even, even looking uh, to people at the mouth, 
it's kind of it's kind of weird, but it, it really help it really helps you to to understand people uh, when you are looking at the mouth of people. So uh, you try to um, to understand uh, not only with the sound, uh, but also with uh, with uh, with the with their mouth movement. Um, in my case too, um, um, there is a there is a one part in the third line sentence formation. Uh, I think it's it's one of, of my weak spots because I have many ideas in my head uh, and I am trying to think in English, not in Spanish. Okay, but it's kind of difficult for me. Um, the, the things that I used to do uh, for this is trying to watch movies in English uh, with captions, but in English too. Um, for example, uh, I, I discovered there that wonder, it, it not, it's not only maravilla in Spanish, I, I learned a, in a in a movie when something when someone says I wonder if you want to and other things and uh, and the translation in Spanish because this this uh, time was in Spanish the captions were in in Spanish the captions uh, was uh, me pregunto si quisieras so that moment was crucial for me because for me always the word wonder was related only to wonder woman or something like that but there is a i don't know a, a trick to watch movies in english and with captions obviously in english but if you are done if you don't understand something uh, at the first time uh, if you can switch to to Spanish captions, maybe you can uh, um, understand or trying to um, not translate, uh, interpretar. I don't know how to say in English. You uh, can say interpret. Okay, uh, you are trying to interpret the the right. Uh, form of of the sentence. It's uh, it's what I think. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Actually, yeah, there are many techniques that we use. Do you remember that as, as we discussed before? There were some techniques when we were in beginner, intermediate, and those are changing, right? So, for example, one of the things that you need to try to do is to try to understand without anything but the sound. That is very important at this level. If you want to move on, that is very important. But this, the number four is actually a very important one because as we say, we are in the same level, but we are not exactly the same. So we all, we have things that are difficult for us. So those are the things that you need to work more. Those are the things that you need to find a strategy so you can get to use that properly. So everybody has to do like a quiz, a test, uh, something by yourself, and then identify what are the things that you need to improve and what can you do so you can improve that, right? Because I mean, it's, your English is very good. And of course, if I believe that everybody, if you go to another country, you are going to do a very good job. But anyways, sometimes it's difficult. I have a friend, to be honest, uh, I remember him. He was very good in English. His grammar was fantastic. He was, um, his pronunciation, he, he, he used to speak as an American person. I mean, he was very, very good. And he went to Canada. He, wa he got a job in Canada. And he said that he, as soon as he get down of the plane, he didn't understand anything at all. <laughs> and he was graduated in English. In, he had a master degree. Of course, he didn't right? 
I mean, you can know a lot of vocabulary, but they use slangs there. They use idioms and you need to, to understand, to learn, to relearn things, right? To familiarize, familiarize. Exactly, you, get, you have to get familiar to many yeah. things. Pronunciation. I mean, it's not the same if you go to Australia and actually that's why we're gonna watch a video about that exactly. So it's not the same. Even the same word is going to sound different. So that's why we're here, right? So we are in a level, this is just the first level in the advanced, but you have a very good level. So that's why I took this so you can improve a little bit more. Anyways, these two weeks we have a little bit more time because we will check just one unit of the book. So uh, let's move on then. If somebody has a question or a comment about any of the topics we're checking, of course you can. You can do it. Remember that the most important part is to practice. So if you are here in this class, is to speak. I can be quiet and you can speak. That is for sure. Okay. Uh, this is another thing, the last part is very important. So you don't want to leave something behind. So if you didn't understand a topic and you say, okay, I'm gonna move to the next one, that little topic some, sometime is going to cause you a little problem for you to understand things. So it's very important that if you didn't get something very clear to study that more because they are going to cause for you to have some gaps in communication. Okay, number five says dive into the deep end. Okay, this is a large one and this is going to be for uh, Ramon, are you there? Raymond. Okay, not possible. Ivan. Hello, Zuleima Ivan. Not possible either. Okay, um, Ada Cáceres. The studying English for an hour once a week isn't usually enough to make uh, any real progress. The best way to quickly improve your English is to spend at the last a few, mi few minutes, minutes practice every day. There is a special language learning method called immersion. With immersion, you try to surround yourself in the language as much as you can in your day-to-day -day activities. You want, you want English to become part of your daily schedule so that you frequently learning and practice until it becomes natural to hear and speak the language. You can, you can create immersion in a lot of fun, creative ways besides whose contact con, Constantly studying English from a book or of or courses. You can switch your phone from sending to English language. You can start watching and listening to English movies and some keep on English daily on volunteer in place where English require. Continue? Yeah, please. Immerse yourself in English. As, as, as much possible every time to you study, changing yourself to listen, to read, and even say things in, in English that you think might, might be too difficult, difficult for you. If you want to speak English fluently, you need to make it an essentially part of your every, everyday life. A program live fluency can help with this. The exposing you to the natural song in the language with the support of learning tool. Fluency lets you watch authentic English videos, which are videos that are made by a foreign English speaker. For example, you can watch clips from popular movies with no music, 
videos children cannot to begin or that talks more advanced learning. Good. What did you understand on this one, Ada? Is <laughs> is there mm, no is a is um sufficient uh, one hour and the once a week for the the the, the paragraph is uh, necessary uh, repeat repeat uh, listen the audios uh, um, watch the series um, videos music um, uh, or repeat the the the, the, the the English. In my case, teacher, for example, and uh, I thinking about uh, making mistake when I pro uh, pronouncing and the trying to the translate the from English to Spanish or vice versa. No sé cómo es. Vice versa. Vice versa. Uh, before I speaking or the being in the public or around. Um, that's uh, who speak the language very well. I might, uh, it's, a, it's a difficult for me for the, para no hacer el ridículo. It's okay. very important for me. Yeah, I believe that you tell some things that are very important. But first of all, yes, uh, when you are learning, not only English, but any language, sometimes you are afraid you are afraid to, to sound not good, to sound funny. And well, of course, here in the class, that is not a problem because we will respect whenever you do a mistake. I mean, it's just a mistake. But it, that is something that is normal in the human nature. You, want, you don't want to say something that is not correct. You prefer not to speak, but that is a mistake. I mean, you have to speak. The more you speak, the better you are going to be in English. So that is for sure. Another thing is uh, that you say that is very important is uh, that at this level, we need to stop translating, right? We don't have to translate from English to Spanish or the other way around. Of course, there are new vocabulary, new words that you need to understand. And so you need to interpret that into Spanish. But uh, the best way for you uh, to do that one is this, actually, this method, I can tell you for sure that is that that is the best i mean for the level that you have right now what you can do is this immersion i mean maybe you are not going to speak in english with everybody here it's not possible in the salvador but whenever you are doing something think in english speak with you in english so any basic things that oh i'm hungry i'm gonna I'm going to cook, I'm going to do a sandwich for me, maybe with coffee. I don't know if I want to drink a soda in English. Do that in English. And when you stop, when you identify a word that you don't know, what is that word? Then you know that you have to go to the dictionary, check some words and include that into the regular vocabulary and then start again, right? If you start thinking in English, speaking with you in English, I mean, all the time, you are going to become very, very good. And also you are going to learn to listen to yourself. That is another thing that is very important. Definitely. Good, Ingmers, remember that one. It's a very good topic. Well, there is a little bit more actually. Raymond, are you here with us? This was kind of large. Ivan, are you here with us? Okay. No matter what you let list, thought the program will make sure that you don't get lost in the content. Interactive subtitle let you click or tap on any word to see a detail in context definition and audio pronunciation example full sentence and clips for the fluent you. Videos where the word shows up. You can also add new words 
to flashcard lists and study them with personalized exercises. And the more you watch authentic videos on Fluent You, the easier it will get for you to understand natural speech. Then you are ready for a real challenge. You can try turning off the subtitles and using only your ears. How much can you understand? Okay, so this is more like uh, an advertisement for the website we're reading, right? But yeah, I, I like the last part. So you go level by level, right? If you understand the videos with the captions, you don't need the captions anymore. You need to turn off the captions and try to listen and try to understand. So you need to go level by level. You need to upgrade your skills. And that's why uh, that's why we're checking on this one because it's part of training, right? You can train yourself. So you can identify and upgrade your skills. Number six, uh, this is going to be for, let's see, Heidi. I'm sorry, teacher, I'm driving, I'm on my way home. Of course, yeah, don't worry, be careful there. Okay. Um, Irene. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening, how are you? Excellent. Nice, could you please help us reading the number six? Okay, stop being a student and start thinking in English. Stop thinking of yourself as someone who is learning English and start thinking of yourself as someone who speaks English. It's a small change, but it makes you feel more confident and help you to better and use the English you already know. This also means you need to start thinking in English. If you want to say the word apple in English, for example, you probably think of, of the word in your native language first, and then try to think in the correct word in English. Instead, instead try imagining a picture of an apple, and then just think the English word apple. Real fluency happens when you stop mentally translate, translating conversations. This is the biggest step from learning English to just being an English speaker. What did you get from this? I agree with this article, but it's difficult sometimes because um, in my in my case, for example, when I try to speak English, always I'm thinking in Spanish, and then I I I'm translating in my mind in the the in the photograph uh, talking about this this this. This paragraph is is an excellent way to 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 learn English and get fluency, but um, sometimes it's difficult to do it. Perfect. Actually, that is true. I mean, it's like a process, right? It's not that you are going to to start thinking in English right now. It's a process that you need to do little by little. But there is a, I mean, there is actually a a break point when you are able to understand. So this is like, this is exactly like driving a car. So when you are learning to drive a car, you're nervous, you uh, are thinking about the brake and you are thinking about the stop and the red light and the people that is around you. But then when you know how to drive, you stop thinking about that. One. You do everything naturally. So the same happens in English. So if you are thinking in English, and when, when you, I mean, for example, in this class, I'm speaking and you are not translating every word. You understand what I'm saying. So that's, that's what we need naturally, okay? And it's exactly what we say before, start thinking in English. And you can think all the time in English and that is going to improve your skills a lot. Good, number seven. This is going to be for 
Roberto Luis, are you here with us? Okay, Maria Alejandra. Hi. Hello. Um, remember that the answer is in the question. Uh, listen carefully when someone asks you a question in English and you answer perfectly every time. English questions are like mirrors. Does he, she, he does, uh, can she, she, he, yes, she can, uh, it is, not it isn't. Uh, if someone asks you a question and you are not sure, how to answer, start by thinking about the words used in the question. The person has already said most of the words you need to make your answers. Instead of just memorizing English grammar, start to look for partner, partners like parents. this one. Parents like, like this one. There are a lot of simple ways to shift. To shift. Cheap. And at the ship and make it easier to remember the right word. Very good. What did you understand on this one? <laughs> uh, I think that it's at the part of English is different than when you talk in uh, Spanish because you don't use for that yes he does or yes he can or a completely that they use uh, the adverbs or auxiliaries that to put and I don't know <laughs> I think that it depends that they you thinking in English when that you thinking and use other words uh, when the person has a question, sir. But I think that the is part of grammar is you try to learn and practice, and you and you uh, use at the correct form. You you rank instantly to thinking in for the different words to use, and that is at that. You um, try to put and use. <laughs> I don't know. I okay. need that teacher. <laughs> Very good. Actually, that is nice. And uh, well, I believe that in this level, you already know this. I mean, uh, if you need to answer something, the answer is in the question. Depending on the words that they are using, you are going to be able to answer and the opposite as well. Whenever you need to do the question, also the answer is the answer, right? Because you check the answer and you will be able to create the question, but you know that already. Number eight, get more out of listening. So yeah, this is an important one. Let's see, this is going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Hello, Jose Wilfredo, are you here with us? Okay, Jose Osmin, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Okay. So let's see, yes. So, okay, so when most students listen to a native English speaker, they focus on understanding what well, of the words mean. This is definitely important, but there are a lot of more you can learn from listening. Try listening, not just to what the words mean, but to how the person says them. And notice which word the person links together, links, sorry, together in a sentence, or when they say, yeah, instead of you, Try to remember these details the next uh, the next time you speak and your English will begin to sound more natural and sound easy, but it can be difficult to actually do. 
when you listen a native to native speaker to native English speaker, it can be hard to understand every single word that is spoken. They may use many words you know you don't know, talk too fast, or have a strong as accent. Good. What did you understand on this one? So that is really good, right? So like try to uh, imitate so, someone. So in your native state, right? A native speaker, because actually they they know so how to like pronounce correctly. Because uh, here, so we usually like think in Spanish, then so like translate the meaning. So in order to to say that the meaning in, in English, right? Like uh, for the like an example for the reason. So we can like use that's that's why instead of to use it, right? So but some sometimes is is it's good to listen like an uh, English uh, a native speaker. So in order that, that we can get knowledge and also the fluency, they can correct us in order that we can sound like more more natural. So the way that, that we speak. Perfect, very good. Yes, actually, yes, it's important to understand the words that other person is saying, but also the way they say, it, right? Intonation is very important in all the languages, actually, not only in English. So it's a very good thing for you to, to check the pattern or the way they are expressing. So you identify why I, what are they saying to you, or if it's urgent or if it's mad or anything like that. Good. Uh, well, before number nine, we're going to stop a little bit because it's already nine. And we are going to check the attendance. So, Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. Present teacher. Good. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Still not working. Uh, Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. And Zuleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Very good. So let's continue then. Today is English for English class. Let me check. Got it, uh, Jose Wilfredo, I was checking. And Francisco, okay, got it, Francisco, good. Let me just check. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to number nine. Teacher. Uh -huh. I just want to say something with the number eight, if Go you ahead. let me. Of course. Uh, something that works for me is when I'm listening to a video song or, or someone, I try to understand at least like the main idea. And when I have the main idea of the topic or, or, or the video, uh, then I, I, I try to understand the rest of the, of the words. And yeah, absolutely. Sometimes I, there are words that, that I don't understand or I don't know what, what, are, they, what are they mean. Very but good. for me, it really works a lot understand the main idea perfect yes actually that is something that is very important i mean uh, maybe you are not going to get all the words 
And, but if you are actually speaking with somebody, that is that is the most important to understand and that you are able to communicate. So understand, ask, or answer what, whatever they ask. So that would be very good. Uh, number nine is going to be use it or lose it. So it's going to be Fernando, the one that is going to help us. Okay, teacher. Use it or lose it. There is an expression in English, use it or lose it, which basically means if you don't practice an ability, you might forget it. This idea can be used to help you remember new English vocabulary. The best way to remember a new word is to use it right away so that it stays in your memory. When you learn a new word, try to say it in a sentence a few times over the next week, and you will be less likely to forget it. Sometimes you may learn a word or phrase that might not be immediately useful to you. It's okay to not focus on memorizing that vocabulary right away especially if there are other more important things to learn. Good, what did you get from this? Uh, it, it's a good practice. Use the new words in a sentence uh, a few times because you can understand and you can learn to pronounce. And I think that this, this method can be useful for phrasal verbs. Because for me, it's, uh, it may be stupid, it's difficult, but this method can be can be help me to, to remember or to use it in a sentence. Perfect. Yes, actually, this is something that happens a lot, right? You ask for a question and you understand the question in the moment, but you never use it, right? So but if you don't use the new word, if you don't get into the, the vocabulary that you usually use, then maybe you are going to see the word and you are going to say, oh my goodness, I know this one, but I don't remember, right? So that is a, a good thing that we need to do. Whenever you have a new word, try to use it, try to include it into your vocabulary, into your daily, day, uh, daily basis activities, things like that. Okay, number 10, learn and study phrases. Okay, this is a small one. This is for Roxana. Okay. Speaking English fluently means being able to express your thought, feelings, and ideas. Your goal is to speak English in full sentences. So why not learn in what, sorry. So why not learn in it full sentences. You'll find that English in some useful in your everyday life in, if you study whole phrases rather than just vocabulary and verbs. Start be thinking about phrases that you see that you use frequently in your native language. Native language. And Native, native land, language and then learn how to say them in English. Good. What did you get from this? Well, uh, we need to uh, try to sometimes think in, in Spanish and try to translate to phrases in English. But sometimes it's really complex because uh, when you are um, learning some phrases in English, they have uh, Sentence? Sen sentido? Uh, uh, yeah, with no sense. They make no sense. Yeah, they have sense in English, just in English, but not in Spanish. And when you try to um, translate the some some paragraph or some um, dichos, how do you say dichos? Uh, <laughs> or slang. a specific, yeah, a specific. Um, Idioms. Those, so, yeah, meetings, yeah. Uh, maybe you you can't because in English it's not possible to translate in this, that specific phrase. So, uh, well, I think that that paragraph that paragraph say that we need to try to think in English in small things like that. But sometimes it's really difficult. 
Okay, perfect. Yes, that is true. Actually, that is so true. And then we need to, uh, yeah, we need to go farther and take, for example, the phrasal verbs is one of the most complex topics because uh, all the verbs with different words are going mm -hmm. to be with different meanings. So that is a, a topic that we really need to get into and then understand and use them, of course. Yeah. Good, perfect. So number 11 says, don't study grammar too much. So let's see, Francisco Eduardo, could you please help us with this? Hello, teacher. Hello. Hello. And the 11 teacher. Or... Yes, please. Okay. Then study grammar too much. The key to learning a language is finding a balance between studying and practicing. Speaking English fluently isn't the same as knowing perfect English grammar. Even native English speakers make grammar mistake. Fluency is about being able to communicate. That's one why something is important to put the grammar textbook away. So you can go out and practice those writing, reading, listening, and speaking skill in the real world. As you keep practicing, you can learn plenty of grammar rules along the way. Perfect. So, yes, uh, what did you understand on this one, uh, Francisco? Uh, I think uh, uh, when uh, when we learning a, a new language, uh, the, the, the first is uh, try to communicate ideas and, and understand uh, ideas. Uh, and, and the grammar is important, but uh, in the process, uh, I think it is, uh, it's not secondary, but it's not really important. The, the, the best, the best uh, uh, option or the the right way to learn to a uh, new language is try uh, communicate a uh, idea the, the the better the better way. Uh, for me, I understand uh, that in this. In this part of our teacher. Very good, perfect, thank you. Yes, grammar is important, but it's not the most important thing. I mean, yes, when you study the simple present tense and the past, you need to understand the, the formula, right? And the verbs and things like that. But then whenever you learn that part, you don't need to, to, to stay more in grammar. I mean, it's important. It's important because it's not the same to speak on the street that to speak uh, in a formal way that is the one that we're learning here for work. Of course, here you need to speak properly, right? But it's true what it says there. I mean, even native English speakers make grammar mistakes. I mean, you make mistakes. I, as a teacher, I make mistakes. People that live in the United States that have spoken in English all their lives, they make mistakes. Everybody does mistakes. So uh, we don't need to to be afraid, for first of all, you don't need to to stop speaking just because you believe that you are going to make a mistake. And uh, yeah, I mean, whenever you see, I mean, when you when you learn English, when you know how to speak English, and you see something like a sentence, or when you listen to somebody saying something that is not correct, you feel it. You know, this is not correct. I mean, it's because you know already because you have practiced a lot. Anyways, it's not that it's not important. It's that the most important are the practicing and the way that you are going to communicate. Number 12 is going to be four. Let's see. Okay, let me just check. For Danny, could you please help us with number 12? Yeah, right. Go ahead. Um, uh, learn intonation. Body language and gestures is the right gestures. Um, 
Yeah. True English fluency is about more than just vocabulary and grammar. If you can figure out intonation, body language, and gestures, you'll really look and sound like a native speaker. Intonation is the rise and fall or tone changes in how a person speaks. Body language is how a person use their own body to support or go against what they mean. Gestures are hand and body movement uh, that work together with what someone is saying. It's not easy to learn these three things because they seem very natural. One way to learn is is to just watch how native English speakers communicate with each other. One way to study this aspect on the language is by hiring a English teacher. If that in your budget, <laughs> and another is watching YouTube videos, um, you can avoid, avoid getting distracted with other videos. Good. What did you understand on this one? And that three um, ways, or, or I think I had three ways that uh, you have to, to learn the intonation and the body language and the gestures. And that three things uh, may, may make you um, to to really uh, talk uh, or speak fluent and and the, this um, there are uh, two two ways <laughs> one is uh, to look at uh, native english uh, how to how to they speak each other and also um, you can watch videos in, in YouTube um, or hiring an English teacher <laughs> and, and that. Perfect. So, well, maybe, yes, this is important when you are communicating. Uh, remember that everybody probably has different body languages and gestures, right? So it's, that makes it a little bit difficult. Yes, there are gestures or body language that is going to be like universal. So for, for, for example, when you reject something or when you accept something, but um, well, I believe that it's going to help you, but it's not one of the most important things. So number 13, use what you know best. That is going to be for Yvonne. Okay, use what you know best. When you are writing and saying your own sentences, focus on using the words you're already familiar with. You may want to use more difficult advanced English words to sound more fluent, but you should stay true to your skill level and keep practicing what you already know. Make sure that you're comfortable with the English you use instead of just trying out new and familiar words just because you want to. Doing so can lead you to saying correct or strange things. Of course, you don't want to learn more and more words and skill to advance. I recommend studying a new word for a little while in context, in sentences and videos before you use it in real conversations. Perfect. So what did you understand on this one? Okay, to improve uh, your English skills, you have to practice but with familiar words, uh, don't try to use um, words that you don't know because 
you you maybe you can use that words but not in the correct way and it's better to practice uh, with sentence with words that are familiar and when you are comfortable with that word that sentence all simple conversations you can advance and move to other type of um of words or uh, maybe another type of um, or advance in your level of the vocabulary or you can practice or you can with with um, with real situations with real situations uh, for example in your work with your co-workers uh, real situations in your house and that um, that uh, was that that will be the best way, and you can learn, for example, five words in, in per day to uh, improve your vocabulary, and you will be more fluency if you try to learn in that way. Okay, perfect. Yes, actually, this is a very good tip. Uh, there are many kinds of words. There are words that are very easy, very easy to, to use, to understand, and some other are a little bit more complex, not only about the meaning, but also about the pronunciation. Remember that there are some words that are similar to other words, and you need to be sure that you are going to express yourself the correct idea, not something that is totally different, right? Like sheep and sheep, right? So. It sounds very similar, but not the same. Good, perfect. Number 14, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Uh, let's see, Anna Claudia. Okay. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Sometimes it can be difficult to put all those rules and words together into a simple sentence. Don't let the fear of saying something wrong stop you from speaking at all. Even if you think you're making a mistake, keep speaking anyway. Most of the time, people will understand what you're trying to say, even if you make a mistake. Plus, the more you speak, the easier it gets. It, it gets. gets. <laughs> and the faster the right words will come to mind. Good. What did you understand on this one? Uh, if we make a mistake, it's like we move on. <laughs> like uh, assuming that nothing happens. We know that we made a mistake, but maybe the other, they don't realize that we made a mistake. They will understand. Mostly if we're talking with a native, uh, but we don't have to emphasize the error. Very we good. need to move on. Definitely. So don't be afraid. This is very important. I mean, this is important in the basic, in the intermediate here right now. Whenever you take the plane to New York, don't be afraid. Just mm -hmm. speak, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. you are going to get used to the pronunciation or the accent or many other things. So it's mm -hmm. very important. Very good. So number 15, it says, keep notes on your mistakes. Ah, okay, so this is important. It's not only uh, to say, I don't care about making mistakes, but also you need to take notes. Uh, let's see, um, Ada Caceres, could you please help us with this? Okay. Don't be afraid to mistake. It's very important for me, teacher. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but also to make sure that uh, you understand them, when you know to, that something went wrong in your English conversation, make a note of in your mind or on your mind or better yet on paper. In your one time study what exactly made you trip, trip up. Do you use the wrong vocabulary? Was something pronounced incorrectly? Maybe right you were using Okay, as the wrong, this is your sentences. Mistakes are un, una, unavoidable. unavoidable, unnecessary. 
but uh, to lower the change of the repeating the same mistake, you must learn it and not run away from them. Good. What did you understand on this? Is the is the very important to to know the mistake. For for example, at the at the first day in the class, no, is a for me is a, is very very difficult is the translate. I not the uh, I not coming the the mistake. Well, yeah, everybody makes mistakes. We know that one. So there are three things that are important. Everybody makes mistakes, even the English or the British people that might yes. come and speak with you. The second one is don't be afraid of mistakes. I mean, you are going to make mistakes and that is normal. But the number three is very important. Notice the mistake so you can correct it. So not only with words or pronunciation, also it's important. I mean, sometimes we make mistake, a uh, one mistake that is very common in our conversation, in the way that we speak. So that is very important to correct. It should be corrected. So you improve your English and your communication is better. So those okay. three things are very, very important. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Unavoidable. What is that, my friends? Something that we cannot avoid. We must face. Very good. Something that is going to happen, right? Like, mm. have you ever heard about Murphy's Law? Mm. Something like yeah. that one, right? If it something is going to happen. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you do or what you don't. It's unavoidable. Very good. So, uh, go ahead. I have, I have a, a, an opinion that I want to share about this. Um, when I don't know if you are, are realized that to this, but when when I uh, realized that the English or United States or American people speak or try to speak in Spanish they they are no ashamed they just speak and you they you understand and even though the the, the verbs are in in another uh, time but they they are no ashamed and then i think well if <laughs> if they are if if they are a uh, no ashamed. Why? Why am I have to be with that feeling when I speak with them? Because it's the same. I don't know. I think in that way. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, actually, that is true. Uh, I believe that there are two different things that affects uh, the way that we learn and the way that they do it. So, of course, uh, the education. It's not the same. I mean, they learn in different ways. Schools there are totally different than the schools here in, in El Salvador, in Latin America, actually. So that affects. Uh, it's a different programs, different ways of learning. Actually, the the things that they learn there in the in those schools in in uh, the United States or uh, Europe are totally different. For example, in engineering, you know, there is an entire subject that is about, how is that? Program obsolescence. That means that you are going to design a computer for that to last five, seven years, because you need as a company that the computer fails and is broken so you can come and purchase another computer. So, but they have a, a subject of that one. I mean, it's something very important for them. But here in El Salvador, I mean, it's totally different, right? Uh, the other thing that is also difficult is that here in El Salvador, we make fun of everybody, right? If somebody says something that is not correct at school, we make laugh. I mean, we, we point at them and that affects people. That is a big problem. Uh, so, but they, they don't care. I mean, of course that happens also in the United States schools, but not that much not that much as here in Latin America. Latin America is something like that. About the education, 
You know, I have a friend that he went to the United States because of many things. And um, he said that he was visiting a school for kids that are geniuses. I mean, very, very smart. And he was very, I mean, he was very interested into that one to check a class of them. And he, when he went to the class, the kids, they were playing. That was the class. And the, the teacher was uh, throwing like a little disc to a little kid and they were playing and speaking about many things. And he said, is that the class for geniuses? And yes, they say, this is, this is like the regular class. About, I mean, there are many kinds of classes, but this is something that we teach. But whenever they were playing with a little disc, then the teacher started to ask, um, what is the speed of the disc if I throw it like this, or if I uh, incline this like this? So they were studying, but they were studying by playing, by enjoying something. So that was very interesting. Good, so now let's go to the next one that is going to be 16. Marcos, could you please help us with this? Okay, okay, teacher. Um, just let me see. Oh, 16, learn from everyone. Yeah, please. Okay, okay. You don't have, you don't, you don't have to only learn English from textbooks and teachers. Anyone who speak English can help you practice. Imagine how you'd feel if someone asks you in your native language, how to pronounce something. Would you be angry? No, you'd probably be happy to help, just like most English speakers are happy to help you. If you know any English speaker, whether it's a friend or co-worker, co -worker, take advantage of the opportunity to practice and learn from them. Make sure to also ask any specific question you have and be open to feedback. Perfect. What did you understand on this one? Okay. Uh, um, that we can learn, that we can learn uh, and we can help um, to, to constantly learn a new language, for example, English, uh, um, for example, with a friend or a coworker we can practice and talking a little bit. And like Danny said, uh, we shouldn't have to feel ashamed of practice because sometimes, yeah, people make fun of that and don't take seriously. And if we have to, if we really want to advance in, in learning another language like English, we have to take it seriously. So yeah, we can learn from everyone, from a, a son, from a coworker, and yeah, it's important. <laughs> Perfect, yeah, actually that is true. Thank you very much with that one, Marcus. And uh, yes, I mean, you can learn from everyone. You can ask anybody uh, questions about pronunciation, about grammar, about whatever you want. And most likely the person that you ask for help they are going to be willing to help. Like it says very, what it says is very true. I mean, if somebody asks you, how do you say this in Spanish? You will be able to help. You will be able to say something. So that is good. Next one, it says use speech text for all English text messages. So this is actually an interesting one. Uh, as yourself, could you please help us with this? Hello, Giselle, are you with us? Hello, yeah, teacher, I'm oh. here. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Use speech to text for all, I thank you. Use speech to text for all English text messaging. You can practice English speaking even when you're texting people. Just speak your text instead of typing them. Typing them. Typing them, thank you. You may need to change your settings to enable speech to text first. Then find the speech option on what, 
whatever keyboard you're using. Often you just need to tap a microphone icon on the right side of the keyboard. Start speaking and your words will appear on the screen. No one hears you talk, but you still get practice. Pretty good deal, huh? But what if most of your communication is with friends and family in your native language? Microsoft Translator has a way around this. Check to see if your native language is included in Microsoft's conversations feature. If it is, you can speak out loud in English and have your words autom automatic automatically translated into text in your native language. Your chat partner can speak in your native language and have their words show up for you in English. This way, you get English speaking and reading, practice while having the conversation you'll be having anyway. Perfect. So what did you understand in this one? That we can practice English, not just speaking with other people. We can practice in so many ways. And one of, one of them are texting people. And I think that we use WhatsApp every day. Everybody use WhatsApp every day or the emails or some or stuff like that. And for example, I do that sometimes with my sister. I tell her, please help me to practice my 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 reading, my writing. And and she's like because she she has a good level English. I think she's better than me. And she's like, okay, let's do it. And I just wrote a uh, write her uh, the whole day in English. I try, right? And when I don't know how to write an idea, I use sometimes uh, this Microsoft translator or uh, the translator that uh, that I already in my in my cell phone so i really use this this method if we can if we can name it, it like that but yeah i think that this is a way to practice very um, i don't know how to say it like very uh, it's algo practical, but I don't know how to say it, teacher. It's practical. It's practical. Yeah, very practical. Very hmm? good. Actually, this is something that we can do. Uh, you, I mean, as Giselle was saying, you can you can dictate in the WhatsApp. Uh, you can dictate. I mean, if you open a document from Google, from the drive, there is also an option for you to dictate and you can set up that in English. So you can practice in that way as well. You are going to be able to see if the microphone if the machine learning understands what you're saying and correct yourself so there are many ways for you to practice many many things and now technology help you doing that one so it's a very good idea if you want to improve some things you can go and research about the best way for you to download so many apps are for free right now and then you just download it and that's it move on with that one and also remember remember that we have the chat group. That is not only to us about the platform or the exercises, you can practice there. If you want to say, hello, how are you? How was your day? There is traffic here, you know, be careful about, I mean, to provide advice and you will be able to practice. So with the group. So that is another thing that you can do, definitely. You are welcome doing that. Okay, number 18 record your own english language audiobooks so that is something i was telling you before right so irene could you please help us with this okay uh, when we think of practicing a language we often think of putting ourselves in situation where we have to use the language but the truth is a lot of confidence and fluency comes from actually speaking. 
This technique can help you do a lot of, a lot more of that. Think about your favorite book, and even if you don't have any favorite book that were written in, in English, you can probably find some in English translation. For example, the Harry Potter series has been sold all over the world. Take any English language book that you already enjoy and record yourself reading it in English. This will take you a while, of course, but it's a way to practice your English pronunciation every day in a way that's fun and interesting for you. Once you finish recording the book, you have a home, home mail out of homemade audio book of it to listen to which will give you a way to practice your listening skills too good what did you get from this okay um I think that it's important practice in different way that you can do it in this way if you enjoy to read it's important to do it for get more vocabulary and if in a if your favorite your favorite hobby and you know about the, the books is a good way to learn more more easily English. I agree with the article and I think that is an excellent opportunity to Building a, a, a fluency and vocabulary in your mind. Good, perfect. Yes, actually, this is a good practice. As I was telling you, well, the idea here is to, to read a book and record yourself, but you can do it, I mean, for any practice. I mean, you can record five minutes or whatever. How was your day, for example, and then listen to it. So you can identify things that you do not understand very well or is pronounced different or you can compare one word with uh, an actual pronunciation. So many things that can be done with this kind of activity. Good, number 19, record what you want to learn and listen. Well, actually this is the one that I was telling you. Juan Miguel, could you please help us with this? Sorry, teacher. Okay. Record what you want to learn. Then listen to it throughout your day. Use the same technique described above to learn English in general, while also practicing your speech. For example, let's say that you'd like to get better at talking to white staff. Maybe you see a fluent you post that include examples of English conversations to have in restaurants. Instead of just reading the post and trying to remember the examples, record yourself reading it. This will give you multiple opportunities to remember the material. When you first read it, when you read it, when you read it out loud, and when you listen to yourself reading it later. Perfect. So what did you get from this? Um, there is a good way to to improve uh, or to get more fluent uh, because you are like the last paragraph says, uh, you are doing three things, uh, chasing the same objective, okay? Uh, read uh, at the first time, then read it uh, and uh, read it in reading it loud and uh, you can hear yourself later uh, when you record the, the, the sentence or the paragraph that you were talking or that you want to, to improve or to learn, okay? Uh, I don't know, I think it's, it's all. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this is something that I was telling you about. This is something very simple. If you do that five minutes every day, I promise you, you will learn more. And the good thing is that you will be able to listen to yourself. 
So you are going to say, um, this is not good, the pronunciation or the grammar that I say, or uh, the structure that I used is not, is not the proper one. So you can correct yourself then. Good, number 20, that is one of the best things that you can do. Tie yourself through everyday activities. So this one is going to be for uh, Roberto Luis, are you here with us? Not possible. Maria Alejandra. Okay. Uh, told yourself uh, to everyday activities. Think about all the things you might do that have a beginning, a middle and the end. For example, following and receive when cooking, dinner or putting together a piece or furniture. These, these processes are opportunities to improve your English speaking skills. Write our instructions for a process in English on a piece of paper. Make it as, as simple as possible and number your steps. For cooking some things, your, instruct your instructions might start like this. Peel the garlic. This or dice. Dice the garlic, peel the onions, slice the onions. Once you have your instruction, follow them. In the meantime, say what you're doing out loud. For example, now I'm cutting, I'm cutting out the onion. Oh or my eyes are starting to water. <laughs> your instructions are a kind of a cheat, cheat, uh, cheat cheats to help you along the way. They'll help you talk continuously without having to stop to think about what to do next. Good. What did you understand in this one? Mm. Like try to uh, practice in English or easier for them to take a lot of work. Uh, if you try to uh, identify different process that you repeat in the daily routine, for example, when you cook or when you sample for a furniture or when you need to prepare a receipt for example and you try to um, think in English when you uh, do a different steps and uh, you think that the uh, uh, when you try and try maybe <laughs> a lot of where you remember when you need and you and if you need a different word for a specific a routine, for example, when you make a receipt, you remember that these words are like this. Okay. Yeah, actually, this is one of the best activities that you can do. Start thinking everything in English. Not only some activities, but everything. I mean, talk with yourself in English and you will see that you are going to improve your level of English. Number 21 says, memorize conversation starters and use them. Let's see. Uh, Jose Osmin, could you please help us with this? Which one? Sorry. 21, please. Okay, sure. Uh, you may miss out on opportunities to practice English speaking if you just can't think of anything to say. An easy solution to this is to memorize conversation started out of ideas for beginning conversations. You can find a lot of this online. For example, here is a list of 250 conversation started of conversation started war. Of course, you wouldn't want to use all of these at any moment. It would probably seem weird if you just walked up to someone and said, what's 
three words best describe you by mem memorizing some ideas will help you feel better about talking to people in casual situation or keep conversation going to going when talking to exchange partners. Perfect. What did you understand on this one? Okay, let's see. Okay, so when we try to memorize like some uh, sentences or some words, so actually that was my 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 mistake. So I I remember that that I was like learning and learning words, but so some words has definition as you mentioned before that we can use it in a in a different like conversation or the, there are some different meanings. So that's why. So I just try to got ideas some some ideas right but it's better so once we know the like the, the complete sentence because it's like clarifying the the whole idea so in order that we can understand it okay perfect. The, the world. Mm -hmm. yeah i believe that conversation starters are very important i mean when you are in a meeting from your job or any any kind of situations i mean you can start talking about things that are common that anybody can start talking about. So those are very good topics. Whenever you are already speaking with somebody, share your opinions online. Oh, well, let's check about this one. Uh, Fernando, could you please help us with this? Sure. To really learn English speaking, you need to learn how to express yourself in English. Even if you have ideas for conversation, it can be hard to know how to put them into your own words. You can practice this by partic participating in conversations online, posting on social media, leaving comments on articles, or writing reviews are all good approach. Goodreads is a site where people leave their thoughts about books they read. Writing about books and movies is always a nice way to practice sharing your opinions in English because they give you a lot of a lot of sorry because they give you a lot to think about. But if you don't have time to do this, there are simpler options. Watch a short video on YouTube and leave a comment underneath. Underneath it, post short opinions on Twitter about anything. There are many options for practicing your English skill before you speak out loud. Perfect. What did you understand on this one? Uh, you can take advantage of the opportunity that internet offer us because nowadays exists a lot of a lot of um, a lot of option for practice. Social media is is common. Uh, all all we know use Facebook or Twitter or all use um, YouTube. And it's a good practice and starting to follow page that uh, that the, the language is English. I'm, uh, for example, uh, I started a, a follow page about my favorite series, but uh, the, the, page, the page are in English because I try to understand that sometimes it's very hard because that people uh, writing in a, I don't know, no, I don't know, not is formal or I don't know, the grammar is is very, I don't know, it's maybe it's a strict language. So it's difficult, but um, sometimes I try to understand the idea and I really discover uh, interesting opinions about some characters or some jokes, etc. It's an it's a good tip. Okay, very good. Yes, actually, the good thing is that you have experienced this, so that is something that we always can do. You can look for something that you are interested in, in English, so you can provide opinion and also get some information. So it's a very good tip, actually. Good number twenty-three. Uh, this is for Francisco. Uh, 
teacher. Okay. Uh, learn some English as well. Why you should be focusing on learning standard English? It can be helpful to know English slang words and phrases so that you can stay curious and understand more English speech. The slang is always present, especially online, so you can really avoid saying it. Knowing and slang idioms and other casual expressions can improve with improve real English fluency because they can let you fall along with the can the game of conversation that happened today. Good. What did you understand on this one? Teacher, as long as this is a new yeah. word for me, uh, what means that? Oh. Yeah, slang are words like street language, something like uh, that is from a country or a sector like, for example, in Spanish, we have here Puchica. So that is something that all in El Salvador happens, right? So maybe some other parts of Central America, but it's a word from here. So knowing that kind of slang is helpful, they say. Uh, okay, sure. uh, hmm? well, uh, uh, I think it's really important uh, uh, know uh, and idioms because it's a uh, 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 phrase or sentence. Uh, we use in the real conversation every day with uh, a few speaking. This is really important. And I think the better uh, way to learn that uh, is to see, is, uh, watch story, is watch video or, or watch stereo uh, than the, uh, we can use a, a real uh, conversation. Perfect. Yeah, it's a very good option, actually. And it's useful, for example, if you are going to travel to other countries. So that is something that you really need to, to learn whenever you are going to go somewhere. Okay, improve your English pronunciation. This is for Maria Alejandra. Boy. <laughs> Uh, improve your English pronunciation. Uh, why there's not single correct English if people have trouble understanding you it, it will be hard for you to speak confidently. Uh, there's not much to improve in pronunciation. You just need to learn the um, mechanics um, and then practice. It's all about how you move your mouth, your mouth, and you and you your and use your lips. Sorry, throat and throat. For this, um, you should watch not native native native, native uh -huh. speakers while they are talking and after not just where they say but how they say it it also helpful to know about well no pronunciation issues english has other pronunciation traps that you should watch out for good what did you understand on this one um that uh, the correct word or a uh, good effort to improve your English if you see uh, other persons to speak English and you see that uh, when you move your mouth, move, mouth or your lips and the uh, different sounds that you uh, say when talk or that to understand that why do <laughs> <laughs> because I I think that a different words is a specific sounds and you make a little or a specific moves or to your lips or your throat or your tongue for you say that the correct form the different words. 
perfect. Yes, this is something that is actually very important pronunciation because there are words that are similar. And I mean, for you to communicate effectively, you definitely need to know the pronunciation of, of the words. Okay, and the last one. This one is for Roxana. Okay. <laughs> Review and test yourself often. Review, sorry. Reviewing, reviewing what you learn is just as important as well, actually learning. Without proper review, you can easily forget a lot of previously learned material. This can greatly slow you down in your path. Your fluency because advantage, advantage? advanced. Because, because advanced English constantly builds open basic, uh -huh. open, open basic, easier concepts, easier concepts. That's why you most frequently test your skill. You can review your learning in a number of different ways. You can make your own vocabulary quizzes. Do translation exercise or have a quick training session with a speaking partners. There are some online resources that you can use for review. You should also think about when the when to review. May you want to review right after a finish, after you finish a new topic or after complete a whole unit of study. Or maybe you want to be extra studious and just review every time to your study. Could you move? Ah, no. Study English. I'm sorry. Mm. You review. Thank you. Your reviews and tests will help you. Will help you. Your progress in English. Seeing how much have improved can greatly increase your motivation to learn. Perfect. What did you understand in this one? Well, basically, we need to uh, improve uh, our English by ourselves looking for quizzes or trying to um, work in some paragraph and practice in different ways to uh, form or our vocabulary and try to um, continue uh, maybe with the topic uh, that we learn in classes, but uh, we need to uh, look for another resources such as online, so some quizzes online or some topic online or some other materials. Okay, perfect. Yes, actually, it's important. And uh, well, this is about uh, test yourself. So you need to check what you need to improve. Uh, so you identify, we check that in another one before, and then you will be able to improve that part that is important. So that's it for today. So this was a kind of a different class. I hope you liked it because it was different. And I'm going to check the attendance before we finish because I know you're tired. So, Ana Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. For you is the 101 today, Heidi. Okay, Ileana Giselle okay. Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. I know you're here, so I know you have problems. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. 
Present teacher. Good. Maria Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Present Luis. Teacher. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana y Beth Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Leima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good rest. See you tomorrow. That is the last class of the week. And dream in English. Bye bye. Thank you, teacher. Good night, everybody. Goodbye. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Le voy a decir al teacher. Sorry, teacher, le robo un minuto. Dígame. Todavía no he podido activar la plataforma. Ya le mandé desde el 23 que empezamos las clases a Catherine y a José, creo que ponía. Y todavía no me resuelve. Así que no puedo trabajar yo. Perfecto, eh, ya la voy a reportar para que le contacten. Mañana la van a contactar para ayudar. Por eso, le, por eso le avisaba, porque el jueves iniciamos y hoy es jueves ya, yo no puedo hacer nada. El manual lo saqué del WhatsApp, que ahí lo mandan y de, por eso lo imprimí. Ok. Por favor, le, le pido. Ok, gracias. Bueno. Hello, Heidi, how are you? Hello, teacher. How are you? I'm very tired, but I'm very well. I'm very tired too. Today is our day, you know. Yeah, it's okay, but anyways, tomorrow is Friday, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of paperwork and uh, we had a lot of of, uh, uh, of, of work ages today. Oh my goodness! Well, mm -hmm. that's the way it is, right? The good thing is that now mm -hmm. we're almost finished, so. Okay, so the first question I have for you is, how do you feel that you're moving on? Do you feel that you're learning? Of course, we are learning, for sure. Uh, your, your style is, is, is different, but it's so nice. It's so nice that you allowed us to, to, to understand what we are reading. Uh, right. could, you, could you see that at, be, at the beginning, uh, we used to read, and then we used to reread because we hadn't, we hadn't um, understood what we, we had read, right? And now we try to figure, figure out what's the idea since the first time we read. Did you notice? Yeah, I have noticed that one. So. <laughs> yeah, I like that one because in that way we practice a lot of things, reading, new vocabulary, uh, understanding, speaking whenever you provide the opinion. It's a very complete exercise. And for this mm -hmm. level, it's very good. Yeah, it's very nice, so I appreciate it. Oh, it's a pleasure. So, and do you have any question about any topic from this or any other module? No, not yet. No, not really. Not really. Okay, Heidi, I see that your English is actually very good. Your accent, I really like your accent. It's, it's very it's nice. And your I try to, I try to watch movies or, or uh, most of all news. I read the New York Times. I read a lot of, of newspapers in English, so I try to think in English. I still don't read in English, <laughs> but <laughs> I hope so soon. <laughs> Definitely, you'll see. <laughs> uh, no, but your English level is, is very good. And you know a lot of vocabulary. The pronunciation is very good. The accent is also very good. So, yeah. I I am 45 right now, but I used to I've been studying English since I was eight, I guess, but not this kind of English. I mean, when you go to learn, they don't teach you the technical words or expressions. And and since since I move on, on the business world, I really need to improve in, in this area, right? So I'm happy to take these classes. I love them. I really love them. Well, we really love to be here with you. So I, I, I check and I know that you, I mean, you are very close to be like 
full English. Uh, there are just a few things, but it's, it's very little. So that's very good. Continue like that. Remember that if you have any questions uh, about anything, you can chat with me directly or on the group all chat or in class. Okay, so I'm gonna be there for you. Okay, teacher, I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Do you need any other thing? Oh no, teacher, we are okay by now. Perfect, so I hope you Thank rest you very well. well. I really enjoyed your class, teacher. Thank you. Oh, I really appreciate it. Thank you for the feedback. Okay, have a good okay. night then and see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Bye-bye.